Hi, I'm Dr. Jana Studnitska, founder of the Intimate Revolution Festival, a festival dedicated to end loneliness and bad sex. Woo so today I'm talking about loneliness and a chapter that is very dear to my heart because the chapter is touch and the wonders of the human skin maybe one of the biggest remedies against loneliness so before i start to go deep into science again um i actually did a ted talk back in 2017 about my experiences as a professional cuddler because i was sitting in this train to vienna i just had broken up with my boyfriend and and I've dated for about one and a half years. And I was thinking, what am I going to do with my life like next? Um, because I was writing my diploma thesis and I had a lot of spare time. And I kind of decided to do the thing that I'm good at, which is touching people. So <laughs> I've gotten the compliment a lot of times that people like to be touched by me, that it feels good. And I thought like, okay, what can I do about that? Um, so I started to become a professional cuddler, which is um, so your customer that wants to cuddle with you comes to comes to your place or to the cuddle space or whatever, um, and you first have like a nice conversation, and then you ask them, okay, how do you want to be hold? What do you need? And often it would be just hugs. And yes, we would keep on our clothes all the time. And it was really a great experience overall because we got to be in contact with so many people who are paying for touch, who are paying for companionship. And being in contact with people who were so often victims of loneliness who felt left out by society. That was really a big, huge eye-opener for me. That loneliness was not just my perceived story when I'd been a teenager and the years after that, when I was 20 and studying uh, you, um, medicine in another city and I was feeling super lonely. But that it's a phenomenon that affects so many of us. One of my favorite clients was a young man who had a disability, had problems with talking. And when I put my arms around him, wrapped him in a hug, he said, the last time somebody touched me like that, it was my mother. And yeah, there's... <laughs> There was a survey actually done in Germany asking Germans what is the most beautiful thing in the world? What makes you happy? And people answered hugs. So yeah, human, humans love touch. It's super important for us. And when I did this research on loneliness, I was so fascinated by what the human skin can do. I'm so happy to share that. So first, the human skin is like a super huge sensory organ, which is two square meters big. It has 800 million receptors. That's a whole lot. And compared with the human eye, that has only five million receptors. Um, the human skin can do so much more than just feel something just feel touch it can actually feel pressure it can feel stretching um, it can feel vibration it can feel temperature and differences in temperature it can feel itching it can feel pain the human skin can actually see because there's rhodopsin receptors in the skin which respond to sunlight and if you ever realize that your skin darkens after you've been in the sun a lot that's the human skin trying to um, protect itself against the UV beams, against developing a melanoma. But of course, then you need some of the UV light to be able to produce the active form of vitamin D. So there's a balance. And so our skin can see, which is great and awesome, right? 
Um, the human skin can do even so much more. It can actually breathe, but rest assured, it's um, it's actually not that much. So it breathes only 0.4% of the oxygen that we take in goes through our skin. But still, our skin can breathe. Pretty awesome, right? And there's another thing that actually they found in a um, laboratory, laboratory of touch in Leipzig. Um, they found that the human fingers um, can feel um, surface differences of about 30 nanometers. So if you touch like this, it can feel a difference of, of, of up to 30 nanometers if there are some rifles on the surface or if it's just flat. Just to put that into perspective, 30 nanometers is 13 um, times to the power of 9 minus 9 meters. Um, and the coronavirus actually is about 120 nanometers big. And the characteristic spikes of the coronavirus, which are called peplomere, they're 20 nanometers big. So hypothetically, if you would arrange those coronaviruses in the right way, we could feel that with the tip of our finger. That's how sensitive our skin is, which is really great. I think when we put it in perspective that we're no way being able to see something that small, but we could feel it which is kind of great. Um, yeah, then what the skin has, especially for touch, is the CT nerves. The C is a category of nerves that are a bit older. T stands for touch. And the CT nerves, like they're specialized on feeling touch. And scientists found out that those get activated when the touch is in a certain way. And I'm gonna show you now how. So first, those CT nerves, they like it soft, so not a big lot of pressure, but just soft touch. What those nerves also like is if you go slow, rather slow than fast. And they also like it warm. They're about like the surface temperature of our hands, about 30 degrees. And it's been shown that parents, for example, they automatically know how to touch the baby's best and instinctively like they touch their offspring like that in a soft slow stroking manner because that's best so what happens if we get touched by someone we like by someone we like being touched um, again as I talk as I said in my TEDx talk Consent is a huge issue. So if you don't like being touched by a person, you are not going to get the happiness hormones. You need to like the person, you need to like the touch. And a little thing from social science, if the person who touches you is above you in a social hierarchy, it's even better. So what else happens? When we get touched in a way that we like, then oxytocin gets released. Oxytocin is also called cuddle hormone. It's a great thing. It's super relaxing. It works great wonders against stress, lowers blood pressure, lowers your heart rate, lowers the cortisol levels. It actually can resolve pain and anxiety. It boosts the immune system and even helps against infections. So, yeah, oxytocin is pretty great. Oxytocin also gets released during orgasms, which is nice. Helps with the pair bonding. And oxytocin also plays a wider role in human pregnancy and birth. There was actually a really great study uh, conducted in 1986 by a scientist called Fields, who showed that in um, babies who were born prematurely, if you massage them, if you give them some touch three times a day, they gain more weight than the babies who were not touched. And they thrive a lot better. They're mentally and physically are a lot 
faster and overall have a better prognosis than the babies who are not receiving touch. So yeah, I think it's really important to state again that touch is really important for us humans to form connections. There's actually this thing in social science called the touch of meters, which pretty much says that, for example, if a waitress touches somebody on the shoulder or on the elbow, then the person is more likely to give them a good tip. Um, it has also been shown in games. If the play, if one of the players gets touched, again, something that's not threatening, like on the shoulder or on the elbow, um, their sense of cooperativeness increases. So they play a lot more social. So yeah, touch makes us humans not only happy, it makes us also more social, more cooperative as a species. And I find it very fascinating and I love touch. So this was the third part of loneliness and tune in for next time when I'm going to talk more about remedies against loneliness, some solutions that came up and uh, yeah, some interventions on a systemic level. So what can institutions like associations do, what can healthcare professionals do against loneliness and what is actually being done in the world, like what does the Ministry of Loneliness do in the UK. So thank you, have a great day, don't forget to touch. See you next time.